Yo, 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 what is up everybody? Popo here bringing guys a new video and today we're going to be watching a set that I had during a local PC. Let's go. Welcome everybody and today we're going to be watching a set that I had during a local PC recently. That PC was hosted by Leaf VGC, whose links will be down in the underbar. It was streamed over on his channel on Twitch. So make sure you go give a follow because in the future we'll be streaming them over there again. Uh, we had a lot of really good players in this event. So it was really, really tough uh, to try to get that top cut. We had 26 players despite a snowstorm. We had a confirmed 32, but some people did have to drop out. Uh, but it was in a fantastic time. So go watch the whole thing if you really want to. You can skip in between each of the matches. Um, it was a really, really good time, really well-run event, and of course the stream was fantastic. We had some fantastic caster and everything like that. Uh, you won't hear casting in this one because it was a little bit messed up. We were still trying to get the sound correctly, um, which is the hardest part. But going into the next one, 100%, uh, the sound will be perfect. And in the future after this, this set, uh, the sound is great as well, so... Uh, feel free to go watch all of those matches. They are great, but here we are. Uh, my, naked, my name is not Jake, and that is not Grant. Uh, so this is right before they changed it. Um, and we are facing Nick, who is a real-life friend, somebody we met at Hartford. He's a fantastic person, uh, and he's a really good player. We actually faced at Hartford as well, which was, which was pretty funny. And... Uh, he was able to beat me there, so we're going to see if he's going to be able to beat me here. I am running a super bulky team that just uh, kind of wants to switch around. Uh, I only played two games with this team leading up into this event, so I didn't really know how I was going to run. I kind of knew what I wanted the core to be, and then I kind of threw a couple of other Pokemon on there, and I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I would have tested a little bit more and had a little bit more confidence in the team overall, because I think I would have done a lot better, but... Um, this team is pretty good. We are 2 and one right now. Uh, we're feeling pretty decent. Um, we have the Porygon 2, the Tinglu, Amoongus, Goldango, Ogrepon, and Incineroar. If you guys would like this, uh, this team sheet, it will be down below. I'm just not going to go over the full team here. Um, a lot of these sets are taken from other people's sets, uh, except for the... Um, the Tinglu and the Porygon, these are sets that I had myself. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it here. And, of course, we are facing, that is uh, Urshifu Dark. So it's going to be that single strike. The Blood Moon Ursaluna. We got the Incineroar, their own Wellspring, uh, Fluttermane, and the Ferrigarath. And um, here I'm just thinking my biggest fear is going to be this Blood Moon Ursaluna. Um, I've talked to Nick before this round, like we, we've conversed every round, and uh, I already kind of know what Nick likes to do with the team, so I'm just going into it like, okay, we got to stop this Blood Moon Ursaluna. My idea is that they're either going to go Fluttermane or Ursaluna early on and try to just get a lot of damage, so my plan is to really just get Trick Room down uh, as quick as I can, so that way I can just take advantage of those, those Trick Room turns and just really uh, play super passively and just keep switching, gaining advantage on the board itself. So, um, but we see the we see the Ogre Pond plus the Incineroar, which was not a lead I was expecting. Uh, as you can see, I go with something that's like not really good into this lead. We are going to get that, um, that boost from the Porygon. Uh, we went with the Porygon download because I felt like uh, I needed some more damage on the Porygon and I'm going to continue to work on this team. I think this is a team that could do really well. It like it just had that right feeling to it and I haven't had a team that really has felt uh, very good uh, going into Regulation F. So this was this was really nice to have a team that really did feel good. So um, yeah, we're, we're going to switch out this Ting Lu here. We want to have Ting Lu go into the Amoongus because we're, we're worried about the fake out. I think the fake out might go into the other slot, but at least Amoongus could take um, that either Horn Leech or that Ivy Cudgel. But actually, the fake out does go into the Amoongus, and we're going to get a little bit of damage onto the Incineroar and taking that too. And we're going to get the free Trick Room up. So this is going to feel pretty good. 
so far though our damage on board isn't the most and this is why i kind of want to change up these builds i feel like this this uh porygon needs just a little bit more damage and uh it's something i i really um want to to have happen here so uh go looking at his team sheet i know that he has terra grass incineroar and he also has um, the Assault Vest on it. So I know it's going to be super bulky as well as not being able to be spored if he does go for that Terrestrialization. But my thought process here is that he's just going to go for the Follow Me. And he's going to go for uh, maybe a U-Turn or something like that. Just to get a little bit of damage onto the Porygon and switch out into something that could position better. So I want to go to the Incineroar so that way I can make sure that I had something on board that not only could do some damage, but also is going to be able to fake out if they do decide to switch into something else like that Blood Moon Ursaluna. Um, or I can go for parting shots onto that Blood Moon Ursaluna and switch into that Ting Lu and gain a little bit of advantage there. So we do see the follow me and we don't see any switches. So I'm thinking the U-turn is going to come out. I was surprised by, by this follow me. Um, and we're just going to get some pretty good damage. And this is why I need to uh, kind of change what this Porygon is doing. Because the Porygon is not doing enough damage. I need it to do 50%. I just grabbed this Porygon from my uh, Azumarill team that I was using before. You had seen the video on. Uh, I just grabbed it from there and just kind of plucked it into this team to make like, you know, the team I'm going to use. I'm like, okay, I want to use Porygon. Boom, there it is. Like, let's use Porygon, you know. So, uh, so it's not really built to be uh, a damaging Porygon, unfortunately. So, um, it doesn't two-shot. We need it to two-shot. That's going to be the next step of the team is making sure uh, that that is there. But we do go into another uh, Blast there. And brings out Dark Urshifu. And I go for a parting shot. And now, um... I'm feeling like this was kind of a mistake. I should have probably just went for knockoff to get rid of the assault vest, so I could have did more damage with either my Amoongus if he terrestrialized, or with this Terra Poison, and uh, that would have also got rid of the Focus Sash that is on this Urshifu Dark, because now Urshifu Dark is looking a little spooky, especially that uh, they did knock off my Evia Light, so. Uh, I'm in a pretty meh position at the moment. It does look like I'm ahead, but honestly, it's a it's a pretty meh position just because of how much output this uh, this Dark Urshifu can do. And um, going into my rebuilding of this team and like improving it, uh, my first goal is to get something that could outpace or just be able to um, take care of the Dark Urshifus. That are out there. It goes out with the Incineroar to get the Intimidate um, onto both of my Pokemon, which is perfectly fine. We're going to see another Follow Me. Just wants to keep everything that he's switching in safe, which makes sense. And since we do not two-shot with the Porygon, uh, we do have to go for for that um, that Pollen Puff there and then get the Terra Blast off here. So, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take down Ogre Pond, but at what cost is, is really the question. We've used a lot of attacks and a lot of our Trick Room to kind of take this thing down. So um, we are sitting with four Pokemon, pretty relatively healthy, but the damage output is still sitting on their side. And my thought is that they most likely have um, have the Blood Moon in the back. Um, but as they are wasting these Trick Room turns, I'm starting to wonder if it is going to be that Fluttermane um, and how I should take care of of everything that they're doing here. So here I gotta make a call. I gotta try to maybe force them into Terra Grass or I got to try to force them to detect. This is the last turn of Trick Room. Um, this is a big mistake because I do switch out the Porygon. The, the best play here is to just Spore into the Urshifu and go for uh, the Terra Blast onto their Incineroar. And this just kind of confirms that I can get Trick Room up next turn, no matter what. And um, that should have been my number one priority here, rather than trying to put Incineroar to sleep for some reason and switching in my own Incineroar, which doesn't doesn't really progress my game at all. So I, I just put myself in a pretty bad position as, uh, as I don't go for that. But they do go for the Detect here, which is perfectly fine. 
Um, it allows me to be able to fake out that slot if I want to. But yeah, he goes for that and goes for the knockoff. So that's going to get rid of my Rocky Helmet, which is going to stop the Searchfu from taking any extra damage. Uh, this Amoongus is also something I've been using for a while, so it's not something I took, uh, a spread I took from somebody. But I really do like it. Um, and here, I can go for two things. I can go for the knockout on this Incineroar, or I can try to get rid of this, um, this Focus Sash, or predict a switch in. And, uh, so, I don't really do either. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking that close combat is coming here, but the play in reality, no matter what is coming, is definitely to just spore into that slot with the Urshifu and uh, potentially fake it out. And then that just gives me way more range of movements. Um, but I did not go for that, unfortunately, and uh, I was punished for it by them going out into that Flutter Man. Um, cause Amoongus does live, I would have got the Spore off, and then I would have been in a really good position. This Flutter Man would have been stuck next turn, not be able to do anything. I could have put a lot of pressure on it, and, uh, I could have potentially switched out Incineroar to try to go and get up that Trick Room on the turn after. But, uh, we're gonna get Incineroar knocked out here. Not the hugest deal. I could have also Parting Shot in next turn if that was, was the use case there too. So, um, really missed opportunity by me. And uh, I'm still up four Pokemon to two, but the two that they have out have so much offensive pressure on me. And without my Eviolite, I'm in a really tough, tough position. So, I'm going to just switch out Incineroar here and just try to take one of the hits uh, using my Amoongus. Um, it, it's. It's a 50-50 on whether they go for close combat or if they're just going to go for wicked blow. And my guess is that they're going to go for the close combat. So Porygon 2 seems like a really good switch in. Then I have uh, knockout, or not knockout, fake out. And then, you know, um, I can take care of that focus sash and do whatever I need to do. But Mungus does go down here. And uh, yeah, that's going to get the first knockout for Nick. Going into this turn, and we see the Wicked Blow. Super unfortunate for me uh, that Wicked Blow comes out. Leaves us at 51%. All we have is the Incineroar and Ting Lu now. And my thought here is that they're going to um, either protect their Urshifu because they don't want to lose their Focus Ash and go for the Moon Blast or the, the Shadow Ball onto the Porygon 2. So. My thought here is my best play is to just go for the Trick Room and um, switch out into the Ting Lu because it's going to lower that that special def the special attack and potentially let my Porygon 2 live. But we got to remember, I don't have that Eviolite anymore. I believe if I have the Eviolite, I always live it. But because I don't, I don't know if I live it. I also hope that maybe... They protect and maybe go Moonblast into the Incineroar, which is super, super unlikely, but something that could happen. But we do see the Shadow Ball coming out here, and it does go into that slot, and it is going to be enough. I think this was a double up either way, just in case it didn't kill. Then uh, you have Close Combat that does go into it and does pick up the knockout. But that Close Combat is just going to go into that Ting Lu, and it is going to take a bunch of damage, 50%. Uh, a little bit more than 50%, uh, lowering the the defenses of a Pokemon that I can't really hurt at the moment. So, um, but that that fake out pressure has been around a lot, and I haven't clicked it. And um, some of that is intentional because a lot of people are just expecting you to click fake outs as soon as you are thrown out there, and um, sometimes that's not really the play. So you got to be careful about going for those. Um, it's a lot riskier to not commit to the fake outs as you just could just straight lose games for not going for them. So uh, here I am going to go for the fake out. I'm going to go for the fake out onto that uh, that Urshifu and I'm going to go for the heavy slam into the flutter main and we just get double protect. So uh, finally respecting it as well. That was a big thing about this was uh, Nick was doing a really good job call not like falling for the fake outs and rather just going for attacks and, and hoping for the best. So 
um, yeah, re re really good double protect by Nick here. And uh, now Nick is going to be in a pretty good position. Um, I wanted to go for Fissure, but I'm like, oh yeah, he got he has Focus Esh, so I can't even go for Fissure now. Uh, early in the game, I should have attacked into that slot, and this would have been a lot different if I could have gone for that Spore on that one turn. Also a lot different, but like I said, Nick did a really good job switching into the right things and just really not getting baited for those uh, those fake outs. So uh, Ting Lu is going to go down. I doubled up into the Flare Main because I do want to see how much these attacks will do into Flare Main. I know it's guaranteed to get at least one of them off. So uh, I just kind of want to see where we were at. And uh, it's a good judge and, you know, it, it almost kills. So... Um, I know that if we can just get a little bit chip on this flutter main now, if, if they bring it again, then uh, we can be in a pretty good position uh, to do a lot of damage. And attacking into the Urshfu would not have been a really good indicator because it is minus two. So it, we would have just saw how much damage it does if it had attacked them previously. But um, yeah, we're going to see that Moonblast and that close combat go into the Incineroar and that's going to be it for game one. So. Uh, Nick takes game one um, and going into game two I just kind of want to do the same thing right I just want to do the same thing I want to lead different though uh, this team is a little tough for me because uh, I just don't have the matchup experience like I said I played two games before this I played one on ladder and I played one against Mrs. Popo so my matchup experience was pretty bad and uh, I didn't really have too many damage calcs uh, done either so um, that doesn't really help anybody. So uh, yeah, going into this game too, I want to make sure that I get the Trick Room up again and uh, I could safely do it. So I go for the Incineroar, but we do see that Ferrigarath coming out here, which I'm perfectly fine with. This team is insanely good against uh, Ferrigarath, so Ferrigaraths are, are a delight. Uh, they are a delight to see, so... Um, I know I'll be able to go for that Trick Room, but my question is, do they try to reverse the Trick Room? Is that going to be their play? Are they really going to push for um, anti-Trick Room stuff? And do I just go forward and go, you know what? If they go for the reverse Trick Room stuff, let me just get damage onto their team, right? Um, that's kind of where I want to be. So that that's kind of the play I'm, I'm going to go with. I just want to get some damage onto this. If he goes for it, then he's going to be almost dead, or at least halfway dead on this Frigorath, but he just goes for the Helping Hand and Ivy Cudgel, and Incineroar just kind of kind of says, yeah, that's fine. Uh, goes down the 40, but he crits back, so uh, Incineroar was angry, said, I'm going to make you look just like me, uh, knocking off that Citrus Berry, and we do get the Trick Room off, so uh, now we're in a pretty good position, and we threaten a lot onto, um, onto this Frigorath here, so I'm thinking maybe we just Poison Terror again, but I decide not to. And uh, I decide that maybe I should switch here. And uh, I, I think Flare Blitz might have just been better. If I would have just... Because if he follows me, right, then all I do is Terra Blast and he just reverses Trick Room. And then I'm not in the greatest position of all time. And uh, bringing out the Ting Lu doesn't really push anything for me. But it's going to look like an insane play as uh, he does go out with the Blood Moon Ursaluna here. So uh, it's going to look really, really good for me. Putting myself in a really good position. And we do see the fall of me. So I'm just going to get free damage onto this thing as well um, with this Terra Blast. Of course, not the Terra Blast. Uh, but it is still going to do decent damage. Once again, I want to I want to like fix my EVs on this Porygon. So that way I can improve that damage calc here. Um, now my question here is, what do I want to go with? I can go for a bunch of different things, but I think I just want to go out to Amoongus and go for Snarl and hope I just don't miss Snarl. Because if I miss Snarl, then we're in a, a rough place. But if, if we could just hit the Snarl, then this Blood Moon Arsaluna is not going to be the, doing the most damage. And having the Amoongus out does put out pressure for, uh, for something like Spore. But the problem is, is that... I just don't have much damage on the board with these two, which is one of the things I do want to change with my Ting Lu itself and, and just try to get uh, maximize the damage I can output from the Ting Lu itself. So we are going to see the Terra. I thought for a second that this might be Water Terra, and I was like, this play is actually insane. But 
it's not it is the normal terror for that blood moon we are decreasing its special attack via the ting lu as well as the snarls going to lower it too uh, and we have a salt vest on our ting lu and you're just gonna see how how strong blood moon ursaluna can be with life orb because uh, we do hit we do get drop we do a little bit of damage to the ogre pawn as well and yeah we see that blood moon come out and that's gonna go right into the ting lu remember this is minus one plus minus his ability and it still does 90 damage that is so much damage it is crazy so my ultimate play here is just to continue to snarl and i can go for the heal and if he does decide to redirect with the ogre pawn then we will get a ton of damage onto the ogre pawn so i am perfectly okay making that trade um and i think it is perfectly fine and if we do get it off then we are just going to be full health ting lu again and if they try to switch into something else which they could switch into incineroar which would be not the greatest thing for us as they'll be able to just go for a protect switch into incineroar is the most threatening play here so that's exactly what i thought was about to happen I was like, dang, Incineroar? No, and I just see uh, the Ferrigraph coming back in. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, at least we're going to knock out Ferrigraph here. So they'll be down a Pokemon. We're almost down an Incineroar as well. And we get the free heal off too. So that's just going to put us all the way back to max on Ting Lu. So no damage done the last turn. Um, here, we do kill it. We do not miss. Uh, we get the knockout onto that Ferrigraph. Putting us in an okay position. Uh, this thing is minus one. We got uh, Ting Lu out there. You saw st still how much damage it did. Um, and his last one is not Incineroar. It's actually going to be um, that Urshifu. And I was just checking how many turns are left. And uh, I just decide he's going to protect. Let's just click Fissure. Because if he switches out into his ogre pawn then we just get the knockout easily onto the ogre pawn if we hit the fissure if he doesn't switch we can possibly just get the knockout easily into into this uh this ursa luna here so uh we go for the fissure but we do miss unfortunately i i if we hit that i think the game is just over so um but yeah we see the blood moon come out and this is into porygon and it still does so much once again, not even respecting the Trick Room and just goes for Wicked Blow here onto the Porygon, putting it down to 56 uh, this early on. Just going to try to kill the Amoongus, which uh, is a pretty sketchy play. Now I have to switch out the Porygon because I need to preserve the Porygon going into the next turn. Um, I could go for the Trick Room and just hope for the best, but I, I don't really need Incineroar anymore. It's not doing too, too much. Uh, I really need the Porygon for endgame, though. And I had considered going for a double switch here, which would give me just uh, a bunch more room to be able to work with um, and be able to, like, you know, let Incineroar go down and then we can go for the Rage Powder plus the Trick Room. But I thought it was just a little too sketchy to go for, as if they just doubled into the um into the ting lu uh and then next turn they would be able to knock out the frigra or the the amoongus so uh i just wasn't confident in it but um we take the wicked blow we're also lowering the damage that he's going to be able to do with the close combat onto the ting lu which is uh really nice and uh, yeah we just see the hyper voice so um amoongus would have just ta taken a lot of free damage but look how much that does it does so much and we just get the stomping tantrum. We're gonna break that that's uh, focus session. We just see that does so much damage, and a lot of that is because we missed the fissure on the turn before, and uh, so that's why it's going to just be able to put out, output so much damage. Now we can go for the spore here, um, because the the question is, do we go for the spore? Or do we go for the protect? Because they have the 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 moon blood or the uh, blood moon on tap at the moment. But we are also pressuring this um, this Urshifu. So um, we actually do see it switch out the Blood Moon Ursaluna. And we're going to see that Ogre Pond come back in. Ogre Pond is still relatively healthy here. So we haven't done really too much. We do see the Detect, which is uh, pretty unfortunate for us. We would have not liked to see that Protect because we did go for uh, the Stomping Tantrum there. 
And uh, yeah, and we went for the spore into the other slot. So fantastic switch by Nick, uh, really calling what that turn was gonna do. Um, now we just go for the Pollen Puff onto the Ogre Pond, and we can go for something like the Heavy Slam, or we can try to predict what they're gonna do. Maybe go for a Spore into that slot, but if they just go for the Follow Me, then we're in a bad position. So. My thought is that they're going to try to double up into this Ting Lu, because Ting Lu is kind of the threat at the moment. Um, and I don't want it to go down, so uh, I am just going to go for that Terrestrialization, and uh, just hope that uh, they double up into it with Close Combat plus, plus an Ivy Cudgel, because we will do perfectly fine with that. Uh, Ivy Cudgel could crit and do a ton of damage as well, so... It is still uh, a risk factor going into that turn. So we do see the follow me, which is uh, fine because we did double up into that. And we are going to see the Wicked Blow going into the Amoongus. It's going to do just over 50%. That Rocky Helmet is going to do some damage back. And we get the Stomping Tantrum off, which is not going to do a ton of damage. But um, with the Pollen Puff added up, it is going to still not do a ton of damage. Um, but my boss man here is on the brink of fainting and my, my theory on this is that they're going to switch that, um, they want us, they want this to survive so they can take care of the Porygon two in the back. Cause, uh, without that, then they might not have enough damage to output into that. And I can go for rage powder to just get the knockout here. Um, but uh, now I just have Snarl, single target Snarl going into this Ogre Pond. I'm not sure how much this is going to do at this point. Um, and now I am kind of just weak to Earth Power. So I'm just like, yeah, I think this one is uh, pretty over. Um, but I have to play to my outs, right? So that, that's all I'm thinking is like, okay, play to my outs. Let's, uh, let's just try to get Trick Room set up here um, and just allow maybe Nick to make a mistake. Uh, I had put myself in a couple of bad mistakes already, so just just getting here, I'm like, okay, now let's just let's do what we need to do. So we're going to go for the Snarl, and we're going to go for that Trick Room, and we're just like, this is it, right? This is, <laughs> this is it. Um... In perspective of Nick, uh, I believe all you have to do is just double up into Porygon. You double up with a the Moonblast, the the Blood Moon. Sorry, I call it Moonblast. I don't know why. Uh, Blood Moon, and you go for uh, the IV Cudgel onto that slot just to confirm a knockout. Uh, of course, it's going to be extra bulky because it is next to the Ting Lu. So my play is hope that they didn't go with that. And uh, we see the Ivy Cudgel actually go into the Ting Lu here. And we're going to see Hyper Voice. And because we do have that special defense uh, decreasing ability, we are going to live with 4 HP. We're going to get the Snarl. And unfortunately, we actually miss, which would have put it into another Snarl range. So um, not a great miss for the Ting Lu here. And uh, just adding a little bit extra pressure to, to this game. Uh, I have to go for the recover. Because if I don't go for the recover, I just kind of lose. And I just want to go Snarl here. But because of that miss, I feel like I... I like, it just... It, I'm so sad it wasn't enough damage. I am going to go for the Snarl, however. Because if I don't, then they just go for anything kind of with this Blood Moon Ursaluna. And it just might have enough damage uh, to knock out either of my Pokemon. So uh, I got to make sure that I keep it lowered. And Ogre Pond is less of a threat. And here I'm just happy that I did go with that play. Because now I'm going to able, be able to hit uh, the big mode. And now Ogre Pond is in a shot for this, uh, this Snarl. So um, we do get the recover off here. And uh, we go back up to 100. We see the Blood Moon, but Blood Moon goes in the Ting Lu, so Snarl's gonna be go not going to be enough. And if it had been, then we would have knocked out. If we didn't miss, we would have knocked out um, into that that Ogre Pond, and then we would have just had a few turns to attack into and hit this one Pokemon. We just need to hit him once. That's all we need to do is we just need to hit him once. 
Uh, but now a safe play here is to go for the um, the follow me and the protect. Um, or the protect, I should say. So uh, we do see the protect from the Urshifu. Um, and we see the spiky shield. And I'm like, yep, that's, uh, that's what I expected. It was just double protect. Though, uh, I targeted into into the ogre pond because if they had decided that the play was to go for ivy cudgel plus um you know protect then i would have been in a re really bad position going into this turn so i needed to make sure that i got uh, that covered and if they didn't protect there then it was just game over right um i could have called it and went for the recover but i did not so we are going to take out the ogre pond but now we have to take a blood moon right to the face um, so this is going to do a lot of damage. We do not have the Ting Lu out anymore, but it is minus two and it still does 78 damage to, I still have Eviolite by the way, to a Porygon 2. So now this is a 50-50 call. Do I recover or do I attack? Does he protect or does he attack? This is the last turn of Trick Room. I didn't even think about it. I just went, I'm going to recover. I'm going to recover. I'm, this is my 50-50 call. I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to recover. And um, that's just what I went for. I was like, yep. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Okay. I'm glad I didn't think about this here. And I do get off the recover. And now Nyx out is going to be to crit a Blood Moon here. So um, we just got to hope for the best. We got. I almost clicked Ice Beam, which I probably still killed. Well, especially with the, with the Life Orb damage. But... Um, we do see the Blood Moon come out, and uh, it is not going to crit, so we do end up uh, taking game two, uh, but it was really close. It was a couple of, of misplays on both of our ends, I believe, and uh, just a fantastic game overall. And going into game three, I suspect that they want to do more of what they did in game one, though I just don't really feel confident in the Gold Dango to really go with that mode so uh, especially against a dark urshifu it just uh it's it, darker urshifu is really strong against my team uh and one of the reasons why i have to change the team because um because not only does it pressure all my guys with their fighting attacks with his fighting attacks but my special attacker is also dark so it just really puts a lot of pressure onto my team in general but we see the urshifu dark and we see the ogre pawn lead here which is completely different from what they've been doing we get the special attack rise which is really really nice and we're just gonna go for the fake out and the trick room here we want to make sure that um we can break this focus ash and if they do decide to switch that we are still in a pretty decent position uh we could also see an ivy cudgel here we know the ivy cudgel doesn't kill even after a helping hand so the only way it's going to kill is if they go for a crit if it does get a crit i should say um so we're, we're i'm feeling in a pretty decent position we do see the withdraw here and i'm guessing this is going to be incineroar and it is incineroar um after consideration i was like maybe i should have just faked out the other slot and just let a close combat minus one close combat and i'm doing fine um so i think i should have just faked out into the ogre pond here I, I think it was just a lot safer of a play um, but we are going to see that we're going to survive at 80, which is perfectly fine. We do get the trick room off. So, uh, but now he has fake out pressure and we just have Incineroar plus, uh, plus the Porygon 2. And here I'm, I believe that, uh, he's going to fake out the Porygon 2, um, because we switched earlier. Uh, if you guys remember earlier, we went for the, uh, switch into the Amoongus. So I'm like, well... Does he do it again? I don't think so. I'm like, maybe he just goes knockoff, thinking I'm going to switch into that. Goes knockoff on the Porygon and Ivy Cudgel into the Incineroar. So let me do a safer play here and just go for the parting shot and go for this, uh, this Terra Blast. Once again, I need to reconfigure this Porygon so that way this is doing 50% to these, uh, these Ogre Ponds here. Uh, so we do go for the Terra. And we actually just see Fake Out, and I'm like, yep, rip, rip Incineroar, and uh, that's going to put us down a Pokemon that we really don't want to be down by. 
Uh, and we get uh, a ton of damage because the Ting Lu is not out as well. So we just do a ton, a ton, a ton of damage. Um, but once again, I got to reconfigure so it does that much damage when Ting Lu is out. Uh, and now we can go out with Amoongus or Ting Lu. I decided to go out with Ting Lu uh, because I don't want to take a Flare Blitz at the moment. And I feel like I'm going to need it to help deal with the um, the Urshifu in the back. So... Uh, my, my idea here is to just go for that Stomping Tantrum and go for the, um, go for the, the Blast. And I double up into the Incineroar, I believe. No, I should have doubled up into the Incineroar is what I should have done. Uh, just in case he Grass Terrored, because if he Grass Terrors there, then, you know, the Stomping Tantrum doesn't do too much. And then we also get uh, a ton of damage via the, the Terra Blast. But we just go into the ogre pond so right now a really bad play for us would be a u-turn plus um a spiky shield um and we just see follow me so i'm okay with the follow me this will just double up into the slot which is really annoying so we're kind of wasting one of our turns it's not quite enough damage to kill the ogre pond though that did still do pretty decent damage uh i wasn't really mad about the damage output there and uh, down goes Ogre Pond, and I'm just like, yep, this is knockoff now into this uh, this Porygon again. And yeah, that is exactly what's going to be, and get rid of that Eviolite, which puts us in a pretty bad position against this Urshifu here. Um, so going into this turn, I'm like, I just don't really have anything if he switches out this Incineroar. Or if he goes for the Stomping Tantrum. I mean, the uh, the Grass Terra. So my Stomping Tantrum doesn't do much. Uh, I'm also worried about what this Urshifu really wants to go with. And uh, yeah, so so here I'm not feeling super great about my position and losing that Incineroar so early. Switching into that Ogre Pond or into uh, Amoongus that turn would have been the most ideal turn I could have had. Uh, it would have put me at such a huge uh advantage going into this turn specifically uh because i would have killed the ogre pond uh, a lot easier and potentially got some spores off so he is going to go for the detect which means we do just get free attacks into this incineroar um that's going to do some pretty good damage does over 50 percent and the terra blast with the ting luau isn't going to be the most successful damage dealer that's out there at the moment but uh it still does 50 percent of what he had left leaving him in a, a pretty good position to just get KO'd uh, by my Amoongus. So I'm okay with where this is at right now. Um, though I'm not super happy, once again, with the way I've played to get to this position. So um, now we got to face down this Urshifu here. And of course, we're facing down this Fluttermane. This is uh, not looking super great for us. Um, I just want to get damage into into boss man the Urshifu, and just break that that focus sash and if he switches out into the incineroar incineroar will just go down and then we are against the uh the two that beat us in game one so uh it's not something i really want to to deal with which is uh which is what's worrying about this position for me i don't really like where i'm at and uh we actually do see a terra and I'm like, oh, is this Terra Fairy? That's interesting, but it's not. It's Terra Stellar for the Surshifu, which is just going to make it do so much more damage. And my thought here is that they're going to go for the uh, close com or not close combat in uh, the Wicked Blow into this this Porygon here. And uh, with both of these attacks, we actually almost knock this thing out, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, we do see that Wicked Blow, and it does go into that Porygon, and uh, it survives. So that was pretty good, but the Fluttermane does not protect. So we could have taken out the Fluttermane that turn uh, with with a uh, Heavy Slam. So we could have eliminated it. Um, here, I'm in a pretty bad position, and I have to make a call. I got to call whether uh, he's going to attack Porygon, or if he's going to close combat into Ting Lu. And my thought process here is that he's going to close combat into Ting Lu because he wants to use that close combat as effectively as he can. 
um, and he's going to Moonblast into the Porygon. So, um, so I go out with the Amoongus, and uh, I know that he's in range for the Amoongus. So my hope is that it's not Wicked Blow and that it is close combat. We do see the Shadow Ball into the Porygon too, which was a better call than going Moonblast. Um, so uh, Porygon 2 is, is going to go down there. He didn't know I had a Moongus. So um, I think if that was... If uh, if I had Goldango in the back, then yeah, you definitely want to 100% want a Shadow Ball. So uh, it makes a lot of sense there to go for that. So... Um, as uh, I would have probably just been knocked out. So now it's down to our last two. It's down to the last two. Uh, we have our Amoongus versus their Incineroar and their Fluttermane. And uh, we got the, the, of course, the Ting Lu who is going to get intimidated here. Is not great for me. Uh, in my opinion, the best play here is just Moonblast and Ting Lu and fake out into the Amoongus. And I think that just wins them the game, though um, it's also a little bit more risky, though I don't think you ever lose the game in that situation. And that's what I'm thinking here. I'm like, do I just spore and just hope Moonblast doesn't kill me for some reason? <laughs> um, I don't make that call, though. I just go for the, the uh, Heavy Slam and I go for the uh, Follow Me or the Rage Powder. Because we know Insin will go down here. You can no longer Terra, so uh, we're just hoping that will be the situation that happens. Maybe we see a Moonblast plus plus a Flare Blitz into that slot, but no, we do see the Fake Out. And we see the Rage Powder come out. So uh, yeah, we are in, in like, okay, this is going to end up being Shadow Ball, right? No, it was Moonblast, so we do end up eating the Moonblast pretty well, thanks to the Ting Lu. And so... Here, I go for the same thing. But here's the mistake I made. <laughs> stomping Tantrum is double powered. I'm intimidated. So if I just Stomping Tantrum here, I just straight up win the game. But instead of going for that, I went for the Heavy Slam. And that was a huge mistake. Um, because in any other situation, I think that the Heavy Slam wins, but since I am intimidated, it does not kill. And Stomping Tantrum always gets the knockout, right? So, if I just Stomping Tantrumed, it was just GG, it's over, it's like... <laughs> yeah, he, he lived on like 4 life, so, yeah. I just needed the Stomping Tantrum there, but I wasn't thinking. I should have slowed down, uh, taking taking a little second to think about the play, and just been like had that clicked connection because I had it earlier when I missed my Fissure. I was like, okay, I missed Fissure. I can go for this, but I forgot to think about the fact that if they fake him out, Stomping Tantrum also does double damage. So that was a huge mistake on my part and actually cost me the game. And Nick was able to pick it up. So congratulations to Nick. Uh, for winning that one uh it was really great to play against nick again like i say nick is a fantastic uh person a great player and uh, just a really cool dude so uh yeah so i hope you guys did enjoy this video uh we had some great games remember go follow leaf down on twitch and uh i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you guys thumbs it up if you're not subscribed make sure you do so and uh i'll see you guys on the next one bye everybody